Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 16 of the Luke Papala Show with guest host Austin Brodigan. How's it going? I'm pretty good. How are you, man? Good, man. Excited to be on the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to have you on. Of course. We went through a, uh, a series of technical difficulties today regarding um, you know, getting this podcast in video due to me being a, a cheap ass person, <laughs> but it's all, it's all good, man. Um, yeah, glad to have you on finally. Appreciate it, man. Long time coming, long time coming. Exactly. Uh, we are sponsored by Crown. Yeah, I'll let you. We are sponsored by Crown Royal. Uh, we do not have the sponsorship yet, once again, as you uh, heard on last podcast, but we are working to get the sponsorship. Big things coming soon. Big oh, yes. coming soon. We are also sponsored by Manscaped. When your balls need a little bit of love. <laughs> uh, you know, ladies don't like when, how should I say, the delicates are uh, prickly, right? They want a nice smooth. When the delicates aren't delicate. Exactly. When the delicates aren't delicate, they like a nice smooth thing to work with. And when you have Manscaped, especially with the Lawnmower 4.0, which I do use, you're going to get that. So sponsored by Manscaped, 20% off if you use the code Luke. I messed that up a lot. But it is what it is. <laughs> Luke, 20% off your order, more than $50. <clears throat> so without further ado, here we go. Let's uh, go. let's use the product. Here you are, sir. You get the first pour. This one's sure. brand new. There you are, sir. Appreciate you. Of course. I'm about to get some back to you. We are both 21, by the way. We are. Yes. Finally. Finally. Long time coming. It's been a minute. Me and Piper have been going at it for, <laughs> for ages now. I still can't talk about it. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'll talk about that in a second. This will be the first one. <clears throat> All right. So I have a little story for you real quick. Um, I uh, Or for everybody else, really, before this, about an, uh, it's like three hours now. I uh, came up to my room. My mom was cleaning out stuff because she put stuff in my room temporarily Yeah. because you know we were painting and stuff like that. Everything was all around the place. So she put stuff in my my closet and she said, hey, come up here real quick. Said, all right. I have this like Christmas gift bag, right? Small thing about this big. And she's like, your bag fell. And I said, what do you mean? Because I have like a shelf on top of like um, – the hangers yeah. where you put everything else meaningless stuff like junk essentially and i said what, what do you mean i ended it it dawned on me i put like 12 13 condoms in there <laughs> when i was like 18 years old and forgot about them Ooh. also a couple letters that i thought were in there not from me from another person a girl um but apparently they weren't in there, so thank God. But yeah, she was yeah. like, yeah, well, what are these? I just started busting out laughing. It was like such an awkward – Did she see them? Or she no, just... she, she saw them. Okay. Trojan, everything. I, I didn't know what else to say. It's so I, 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 it is. It is. Uh, you know, the YSU brand is right here. You know, Trojan's just up there. but A little bit. It is. Bit. Bit, yeah. Man. <sighs> All right. I got a story too. Go ahead. So um, probably a year or two ago – I had it's now an ex girlfriend. Okay. Um, obviously we had sex sometimes. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> no, no, to put it lightly, <laughs> sometimes yes. So obviously you know wore condoms protection. Of course, it's key. Yes. Um. So you know when you're done, you know you throw it back in the wrapper. Oh, but of course. And eventually you throw it away, right? Mm -hmm. So I put it back in the wrapper. Next day I'm at my friends. And I get a phone call. He goes, why did our dog just throw up a condom? <gasps> oh. So I forgot to throw it away. My dog went uh, in the room, mm -hmm. ate it, and then threw it up. It was all still there. She saw the whole thing. Uh, to put it lightly, it was a very embarrassing moment. But, like, 
it's a good story to tell. So, dude, you know, that's crazy, man. It was bad. It was so bad. I uh, I've heard of stories where like guys will uh, and if you want to keep the sunglasses on, keep them on. I just want to have them on in the beginning. But like guys are like, obviously, you know, the action will happen. <laughs> to put it lightly, um, and then they'll get the condom right. And they'll just flush it down the toilet. Yeah, you can't do that. Well, you do that so many times, you're going to mess up the, you're going to clog the pipe. It's going to burst eventually. Yeah. And so for this, I forget who, it didn't happen to anybody that I knew, but I heard a story about it. And apparently the parents didn't know that, you know, the girl and the guy were, um, you know, playing hide, playing hide the sausage. That's, uh, but they found out after, because obviously the guy who, examine the pipe stuff like that the people who were like repairing them you know they found a bunch of used condoms is this at the daughter's house or the son's house Daughter's house. oh no yeah oh no yeah <laughs> exactly That's so bad. you know their, their, their little girl wasn't her little girl anymore so little anymore <laughs> that's messed up i know that's terrible it is pretty bad but i'm just glad that i was never in a situation like that mind you i'm not sexually active Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. But like, it's just like one of those things where like, come on, man. You got to be smarter than that. I, I think I've known that since I was probably 14 years old. Yeah. That's just something you, you know not to do. Yeah. You got to bury it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have your dog dig up the hole and yeah, bury it in the backyard. Man's best friend for a reason. Exactly. exactly. I know somebody. Oh, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Speaking of that, I, <laughs> oh, I know somebody. And it may have been a rumor, so I'm not going to, I don't really name drop here, but um, basically this person who shall not be named, allegedly. Do uh, I know this person? No, I don't think you do. Okay. Well, you might. Anyway, I'll tell you after. Okay. <laughs> um, allegedly, this person got, you know, horny one night and um, put a little peanut butter on, um, you oh know, God. his protected jewels by the way we are sponsored by manscaped once again the lawnmower 4.0 four digit code or four letter code luke 20 percent off at the checkout (laughs) but he put a little bit of peanut butter on his sausage so his dog would come over and lick it Mm -hmm. um and apparently he enjoyed it yes i don't know if it was real i don't know if it was fake that's interesting because I so I used to play football in high school. Uh, I don't know if this is the same person or not. <laughs> I really don't. But so it was a playoff game, and um, so I'm trying to think how to start this. I don't even know how it came up, but so in the locker room, someone someone brought up the same situation you did. So the whole game, we were just screaming "dog job" at him. That's what we called him for the entire. We ended up losing, but. Um, so he got the last laugh, I guess. But I mean, to each their own. I I personally don't support bestiality. But, no, um, neither do I. No matter how desperate you may get. Yeah, I mean, listen, times get hard out here. Dry spells happen, but um, I don't condone that ever being a resort you go to. Yeah, that is the lowest of lows. It really is. is. I. That's all I got to say about that. To be honest, it's well. There's nothing much more to say. You know, it's just not okay. It's not okay. No innocent it's an innocent dog that you're just putting on blast like that i guess or cat man if you're doing it with a cat you got real problems a dog's one thing not not it's still weird yeah but you're doing it with a cat i don't even know what to tell you yeah i, <laughs> I, I don't it's uh you need to go a lot to of, psych warden or something i don't know yeah a lot of a lot of messed up people out there for sure definitely i uh yeah you can't condone that at no. all no Special place in hell, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's videos of like, I think there's videos of like girls getting like railed by horses. <laughs> how could you <laughs> how, how, how could you even let that happen? I'm not one to watch these videos, full disclosure right now. But like, I like listening to like the Joe Rogan experience, for example, like guests will like cite like these videos and be like i don't know how it even comes up just casual conversation like how did this even come up but like you know what i mean That's it's terrible. weird i i remember this is also a high school story oh, boys i remember there was a video floating around i don't even know who i truthfully don't know who it was but there was a dog that was having sex 
with a a girl who went <gasps> to high school somewhere around here. And like that just blew my mind. Yeah, I, a dog. I, I never wanted to see that. Like like the peanut butter once again, it's one thing. Still not okay. But no. That's a whole different level that you take it to that I don't understand. Like, what goes through their head? I don't. Yeah. I swear to God, bro. I swear to God. Yeah. Like, did the dog at least ask, like, what her name was? Or... No. Like, didn't even take her on a date. That's messed up. I swear to God, man. Like, <laughs> it's crazy out here anymore, man. I feel like post-COVID, everything's changed. It's an understatement. Like, for example, college. I don't know about your college experience pre-COVID, but mine pre-COVID was crazy. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. I, I was there all the time. Like, I would, like, actually work. Yeah. I'd put, like, work into, like, school. I had, like, like a hard major. So, like, I'd be there from, say, whatever time I got there in the morning to, like, 10 p.m. Where I'd be studying at the library. It was a nice little thing back yeah. in the day where I was, like, a good student. I get Chipotle or Hotheads, depending on how, you know, what mood you, I was in. You got to go Chipotle. Well, when Chipotle was packed or when I didn't feel it's like fair. going all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chipotle uh, bowl with the chips. Yeah, you just did the chips. And, oh, so good. And it was fantastic. For it, was, sure. it was a great time. Was, okay. Yeah, but after that, it was like everything changed. Nah, I agree. My, my studies definitely went way down. Because mm -hmm. I feel like when you have online tests and you don't have to study and you know you don't have to study, you could just cheat and like they'll be cool with it. Yeah. It defeats the purpose entirely. I agree. Entirely. COVID definitely changed everybody, I feel like. I mean, I don't consider myself a blue collar worker at all, mm -hmm. but so I, I had a campus job. Um, most people know that. Mm -hmm. So obviously when I shut down, so did my job. So mm -hmm. I had to look elsewhere. So I ended up picking up a job at this factory in Youngstown. And so like I got to know people around there. I was probably there for two months before I found something else. It was mm -hmm. quick, but there's this one forklift driver. Cause it was like a pallet company. Mm -hmm. There was this one forklift driver. And I was always like, this dude's such a nice guy like this and that. Like I, I, I liked him a lot. Mm -hmm. Find out two weeks, probably two, three weeks in, after forming like a decent relationship with a guy, I'm not saying that I go hang out with him on the weekends or whatever, right. but you know, so like a lot of those like companies like that, they have people who are like former like felons or whatever have you. This guy went to jail. I don't even know how long, I don't know how he got out, but he went to jail. I guess he was like in the drug scene a lot. He went to jail for burning someone alive. <gasps> what? Like, Burn them alive, I swear to God. Like, so, I, like, I always called him Black Santa Claus. Like, that's like, like, cause he, like, he was a bigger dude. Um, he had a beard. Like, he just gave me, like, Black Santa Claus vibes. Like, I always thought, like, this dude's awesome. And then, ever since that day, I was looking at him different, you know, words out to Kendrick Lamar. But, like, I didn't even know how to, like, look at him after that. I was like, yeah. After that, I ended up, I, I became friends with a different forklift driver because that That's was that, that was nuts. Talking about getting arrested, um, okay. this is a uh, this is breaking news because I kept alluding to this, but I couldn't tell the information until now. <clears throat> the story becomes official. Yeah, it's official. Um, I was arrested on the night of October twenty fourth, Drake's birthday. That's the only reason I remember the date. Uh. You were there. I was there. And what was it like from your perspective? Because I remember my perspective pretty well. So, like, are you telling the story fully? Fully. All right. So, I I previously knew about Open Container. You know, it's something you can't be doing. Um, I I get I get dragged for it all the time, but I keep a satchel. People call it a man purse, whatever have you. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you. It, I appreciate it. looks it. good. So I keep a satchel. And, you know, if I'm going from room to room or whatever, I'll just tuck my drink in the satchel. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Um, obviously, some people did not. Uh, for me, it was just, I wouldn't say I was scared necessarily, but I was like, 
it was like, wow, this is actually happening. I'll let you tell the story, but I was like, I was like, wow, like this is for real. Like, and then, so me and another one of our friends obviously came and picked you up and stuff, but I was just in shock. I was like, I, cause I, I just kind of like come to expect like, uh, like nothing's going to come out of this. Like, yeah. It's all getting overblown. Nothing's going to happen, but this one happened. I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you take away with the story, but. Well, <clears throat> starting off for the audience at home, it was the night of October 24th, and there was a party in Liberty. Ravenna. 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 Same thing, though. Ravenna. Same Liberty. thing, yeah, different shit. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever. So we had gone to the party in Ravenna. I had driven to the edge, and then we had a friend drive us to the party in Ravenna. Did you drove to the party, I think, right? Did you or no? Yes, yes, I did. But okay, so we go to the party in Ravenna. Push come to shove, it gets shut down. Cops come. Should have been kind of a warning to to me. But no. <laughs> I I'm not gonna lie. You you see girls with a little bit of cleavage, you get excited. I'm not gonna lie. At these Halloween parties, I mean it's different. Out it, there, it, it's different. It's crazy. Uh Respect to them. We're not about. To, I'm not about to like put hint or whatever. But like, I'm just digging myself a hole. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so we're walking back, right? Because obviously we don't want to go towards the cops. I'm not asking these guys how their night is. Mm -hmm. Um. So we keep going, and I see there's a truck, and the truck has a big thing of bush orange. Um. Just sitting there, unopened. How many? The thirty-six were in this thing. A lot. I don't even remember. I know it was a, it was a good amount. Though. It was a big ass box. Yes. So, I had the idea of um picking it up and taking it. I think there might have been two even. Once again, we don't condone stealing. However, when things happen, they happen. You know, you you live and you learn. And mind us, mind you. I wasn't intoxicated at all. Yes. I had maybe one beer. Yes. I thought it was fine. We were being safe. Very safe. So Very safe. the four of us drive back to the edge. Um, and, you know, I put, not going to lie, five bush oranges in my pocket. And I had one in each hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a nice little coat. So one in each pocket of the coat. So we're walking, whatever. And I'm sipping on one. And in the uh, common area, shall we say, um, there were a lot of people congregating in the common area. And, you know, there's always cops that are, like, patrolling the edge. Mm -hmm. but, Especially on a night like Halloween. Yes, but they're pushovers. Usually. Yes. Like, like I said, usually you think it's all overblown, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, because they're a bunch of younger guys or sometimes a little bit older guys. And they always flirt with the girls that... Yeah, they always, <laughs> they always like to flirt with the girls, basically, that flirt with them because they don't have any real trajectory in their life. I mean, if you're 50 working as a Youngstown State Police cop and that's what you're excited about, then you're a loser. I'm, I'm sorry. Especially in Youngstown. I mean, usually you got bigger cases to deal with. Than yeah, there could be a rape with. down the street, God nice. forbid, or an overdose. But, you know, you want to flirt with the girl that's got double Ds. I mean, I'm just saying that priorities, you know priorities. what I mean? Priorities. Whatever. Um, so going, they were actually, they actually felt like doing their job that night. They did. And, uh, you know, the, the blonde haired dude that's like 24, kind of pale. He said, all right, give it to me. And I, I had an open container. That was my first warning. I gave it to him. Looked behind my back. He goes around the corner. I pop open a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so we go. I'm enjoying myself, mind you. We go to an apartment. We're chilling, whatever. I thought I was spitting game to this one girl. I wasn't at all. <laughs> that happened. We leave. We go upstairs to the fourth floor because we thought there was going to be a party. Mind you, I still have an open container at the time. Now, I did not know that it was a crime to have an open container mm -hmm. like that because um, I'm stupid. I'm not intelligent. You can tell by the way I'm not intelligent at all. <laughs> So we couldn't find the party and we then got word that the party was in a different building at the edge. So we're like, okay, there were 12 of us. We figured, okay, let's all go downstairs. 
will walk. Mm -hmm. And so at this point in time, I have one more bush uh, orange in my right pocket of my coat. And the other one was in my hand. Open container, of course. Yes. So I'm one of the first people walking down the steps. And all I remember is, I think it was Sebastian. I don't know if you know Sebastian or Sebastian DeFalco. I'm not off top of I just dropped his name. Oh, well. But he, he kind of stumbled <laughs> and he kind of fell into the wall. And we're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. You all right, bro? He's like, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. Cool. Whatever. So we did that. We come around the corner. And all of a sudden, there's these two female cops. Yes. Correct. YSU police department cops. And that's immediately I was like, oh, shit. Because you see, I had my container and I was like proud to show the label and stuff like that. You'd be lying if you said you weren't showing off a little. Bit. Oh, I was a showing off. I, I, I was showing off a little bit, you know. I don't know if like girls think it's attractive. Um, they don't probably, but in my mind, I was like, shit, you know, I'm 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 having fun, whatever. He was, sh- he was showing out a little bit. Whatever, yeah. it is what it is. <clears throat> so then I see them and I'm like, oh. You know, we're tucking it in now. I kind of had it like a football, but I kept it low enough. I thought I was good. <clears throat> so then all 12 of us walk by, and then I hear, as soon as, like, my shoulder passes, I'm like, I hear, excuse me, come back here. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I, I, you know, I turned around, and I had my thing, you know, kind of tucked behind my legs, sort of, whatever, the open container, the bush orange that I stole. Uh, so that happened. The first cop uh, talks to my friend, interrogates him, and you see, I thought he was 20. I thought Dave was 20. I also thought he was 20. I, I didn't know him at the time, mm-hmm. so I, I thought everyone was underage to be honest i'm not gonna lie well so did i so she questions him she says how old are you he says 21 i'm like oh bet i know he's not 21 okay so if they question me i'm gonna tell them i'm 21 mm-hmm. gives them the name dave cooch okay oh, well oh well it is, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't get any trouble so it's all good um but the story is just unraveling um, names are dropping. Names are dropping. Things are flying. Things are yeah, yeah. Shit is hitting the fan, or it did hit the fan this day. So what happened next is she took him outside, checked him. Apparently he was twenty one, or mm-hmm. I thought he had a fake, but they looked him up and it was legit. Then she comes to me, the second cop, and you know what happened next was truly an act of stupidity. Yeah. Um. It was- Basically, <laughs> what happened was she asked how old I was, and I said 21, and I wasn't 21. No, you were not. <laughs> the next thing that she asked was my name, and you see, I thought I was going to be smart and give her a fake name. Also, I uh, was just a little bit scared, just a tad bit rattled. A little bit. So I said my first name is Luke. Piper. Piper. Luke Piper. Yeah, that's my uh, that's my alias. The Luke Piper <laughs> show. And so she goes, Can I see your ID? And I said, I don't have one on me, knowing damn well it was in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then she said, What's your social? Because she had a walkie-talkie with another guy looking up the YSU student database. Here's where the mess up comes. I figured, you know, it's a crime to give her a fake social. <laughs> <laughs> I give her my real social. I know I'm screwed so, at this point. So you got fake name, real social at this point. You're looking at the smartest human being right here. I, I have a master's degree in intelligence, clear. 100 IQ plus. Oh my gosh, plus, 100 plus. 100 plus. Whatever. At this point, I know I'm screwed. Um, just as screwed as the dog that was, you know, having sex with the female was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe not quite that screwed, but still pretty screwed. No, worse, 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 worse. Eh, not as screwed. That's a reputation. Really, yeah, right exactly. There. You can't find my mugshot. Look it up. You won't find it because there's not a mugshot. Yeah. You'll have to look up Luke Piper. <laughs> That's how you find it. 
<laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it was uh, so they looked it up, and she goes, "Why'd you lie?" Because you know, it said I was twenty, and it said my name, and I said, "Ah, oh, I, 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 I panicked." And so she took me to the captain or the head police officer. So guy was probably like 35, bald, intimidating to say the least. Uh, Shorter guy, but, you know, intimidating stuff. And at this point, everybody's watching me or so I thought. Truth be told, it was all a blur. So they take me over to him. I won't lie, it was a blur for me too. They take me over to, (laughs) they take me over to him and he goes, why'd you lie? And I, I said the same thing, I panicked. And then she tells him what happened. And then he goes, all right, put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. And at that point, I just hear him reading me my Miranda rights. That was the oh shit. Yeah, that was the oh shit. I never- So the entire crew we were with, we're all like, so like in this area. So like we're in a hallway when all this is happening. Mm-hmm. Like the rest of us were like down by the lobby. And we're all just kind of peeking our heads like, oh, my God, like, is this really happening? Like, we're like, don't look, don't look. You'll get arrested, too. Like, it was crazy. Like, it was really like, like I said, like, oh, shit, this is actually happening. Like, crazy moment. Pippi's going to jail. Like, yeah. Well, at that point, after he was, he read me my Miranda rights. And I felt like I was going to pass out. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't afraid of, like, what anybody would think. It was just that they cuffed me like i was literally in cuffs Mm -hmm. and that feeling it's a weird ass feeling so i started panicking right and like i said i felt like i was going to fall backwards and pass out and so what do i do i start breathing (laughs) like a retard and they go what what are you doing probably thought i was on drugs and i said i'm about to pass out he was pale yes bro he looked like a piece of paper they said they said why are you sweating so much i said because i'm about to pass out (laughs) <laughs> like, what do you mean so that happened he kind of caught me in a way i didn't fall back but he was there to like make sure i wouldn't fall so they waited a brief period of seconds probably like 30 seconds whatever and then they took me so they walked me out in cuffs mind you in front of all my friends and everybody that i knew that was in the lobby outside whatever and we walk and we go to the cop car and then of course, you know, he puts me in the back of the cop car. And just before he opens the door, I said something corny like, oh, aren't you going to tell me to put my head and watch my head when I when I sit down? And he didn't say anything. I was like, oh, this is just like a movie. He didn't say anything. I was just trying to make light of the situation. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. Uh, for anybody that hasn't sat in the back of a cop car, um, not very comfortable. I'd rather sit on like a park bench that has like 30,000 splinters and just has rust all over it. It's just, it's like a plastic back and it's just down. Was it it like clean? Yeah, it was clean. It was spotless. Spotless. I mean, you could. Because I've heard, I don't know how true it is. It might be BS, but I've heard there's like sometimes there's like throw up back there and whatever have you. Not for me. Okay. We got to the station and he goes, are you going to resist arrest? I said, what do you mean? He's like, we have people before that have like kicked down the windows and shit like that. I was like, I mean, clearly I can't resist arrest. What, yeah. do, you, what do you mean? I'm already at rock bottom. So he goes, okay. So he walks me into the station. They chain me to the bench. They take all my gift cards or so I thought all my stuff in my wallet besides my ID and um, just like cards and stuff like that important stuff like debit cards yeah um so that happened and then while i'm chained to the bench in the holding cell he goes on to tell me where because i told him because they confiscated everything from me bush orange he then goes on to tell me where to get bush orange he's like oh that's super rare you should go here to get i was like 21 that's what i'm saying these cops now now you want to act cool i'm yeah yeah exactly it's it's one of those things i'm not saying defund the police but (laughs) <laughs> you know what i mean but that's that's what happened um so yeah but we'll be right back we're gonna be back with a brief intermission and uh yeah so stay tuned what's going on everyone i'm so glad you're listening to or watching the show but before i let you go i have one question for you do you want to support me and no honey i'm not talking about emotional support i'm talking about supporting the luke papala show How can I do this, you may ask? Well, lucky for you, I have the answer. 
In the description section of the show and under each episode, you'll find a link that says support this podcast. What you're going to do is you're going to click on that link. From there, you'll be able to become an official supporter of the Lupa Paula show for as little as 99 cents a month. That's right. Can you afford that $10 Starbucks coffee that you get five times a week? Yeah, I thought so. Then you can afford to support me for 99 cents a month. Can you afford the 20 packs of cigarettes that you buy multiple times a week? Yeah, I thought so. Then you can afford to support me for as little as 99 cents a month. Can you afford those 12 packs of condoms that you purchase multiple times a month to either use for your partner or practice putting on yourself? (laughs) Yeah, I thought so. Then you can afford to support me for as little as 99 cents a month. So what are you waiting for? Become an official supporter. It'll be much more fulfilling than the three things that I just mentioned. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. All right. That's on? Perfect. Yeah, so <clears throat> thank you to Anchor for sponsoring this show real quick. And um, also, if you haven't already, subscribe, give the video a like, and yes, uh, support me. Yes, 99 sir. cents a month. That's all it takes. So anyway, <clears throat> back to the story. <laughs> okay, they empty out my wallet and... He's suggesting like different places to buy bush orange, which mm-hmm. like, what the hell? You just busted me for exactly. having an open like, container under 21. <clears throat> so they're going through my stuff and I asked if there would be a mug shop. They said no. Will this be in the paper? They said no. It's almost a shame, honestly. It's like if you're gonna do all this, at least give me my mug shot. Yeah, like where's my street cred? All I have <laughs> all I have is my balls and my word, Tony Montana. Then, mm. You know, but um yeah, it was like, okay, whatever, at least my a lot of people won't know unless yeah. word gets out, which word Fair. got out. Fair. But it, that happened. And then they said, okay, you have one person to call. Make it good. I'm like, oh, shit, okay. I call Pat D'Onofrio. <clears throat> Another name drop. Crazy. Now, he's at the other edge, the party that we were going to. Yes. I call him, and I explain the situation. He goes, hey, man, uh, I'm, I'm a little tipsy, uh. Just give me 20 minutes. I'll be good. I hung up immediately because, like, you have to check in with them. You have to come in, sign a bunch of papers, and talk to them physically. Mm-hmm. It's like I knew that wasn't going to be it. So I called Nick. I called Nick, explained the situation to him. He comes. And uh, you were in the truck, obviously. I was, I was with Nick at this time, yeah. So he signs the papers. They gave everything to me. And I walked out. They said, uh, you're not going to drive home, are you? I said, no. We got to the edge. I drove home. You really weren't even intoxicated. No, though. not at all. I had like, one beer. Yeah. I was fine. Listen, if I, if I was intoxicated, though, oh, it would have been bad. Yeah. It would have been really bad. Yeah, it, it would have probably been a different story then. Mm-hmm. Did they make you breathalyze or anything like that? Nope. Really? Mm-mm. Yeah, so they told me I had Surprising. to uh, – Yeah, they told me I had a court date on that following Monday, and – it was really bad because I lied to the cops. If I didn't lie to the cops, it wouldn't have been bad. Yeah, they probably would just took it from you and told yeah. you to be on your way. So I had to get an attorney, pay like 2 k But all charges dropped, mind you. So technically, I'm not in the wrong anymore. Clear. Yeah. So Clear man. We can, we can enjoy this. Cheers to that. Legally, cheers. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Man, that's... So it's truly crazy, but I'm glad it's behind me, though. I mean, better to be behind than in front. Exactly. <laughs> in any situation. <laughs> oh, that was that was good. That was I like the double meaning there. That was good. Accidents happen. <laughs> Once again, it could happen for that. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, it's. I don't know. I like. Talking about stuff indirectly like that. Yeah. That's kind of my thing. So I don't I I couldn't find a word there, so it didn't have enough meaning. I think double entendre would work there. Okay. I think so. Well, I, I thought double entendre was only for raps. No. Really? I think it could apply to anything. Huh. 
Uh, out here in the comments, there's comments, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the comments, let us know. Are we are we correct or are we wrong about what a double yeah. entendre is? Accidents can happen for sure. I know a couple of you might be accidents. That's okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's okay. You're still people. You're still here. Exactly. And we love you. All love. It's all love. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. I'm glad that we're out of that situation. And you know what? I'm glad I share that situation with some of my closest friends. So it's all that matters. It was it's a, once again, it's a good story to tell. Yeah, like at the yeah. end of the day, after after it all blows over, you can look back and laugh. So oh, I, I, I've already I laughed the day after. Yeah, see, that's what it's all about. It's all it's yeah. All about. I'm glad it happened though. I'm not gonna lie, because now I know of a container. It's just not. It's Lesson a, it's, a, it's illegal. Lesson so the moral out of all of this is, go buy a satchel. Go buy a satchel. Go buy a satchel. Now, you are. Kind of a distinguished artist, would you say that? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. I don't like to brag. I, I try to stay humble. Would you like to tell the audience like what you do? Um, so it really started also around COVID because, like I said, I lost my job for the time being. Mm-hmm. Um, I started up because I'm I'm decent with art. I do a lot of painting stuff like that. Um, I started up a little like Instagram type business which I would sell canvases for a lot of custom work. I did like a huge like mural on my wall of like a bunch of my different favorite music artists. Um, it did pretty well. I probably made a couple thousand dollars oh, in the shit. summer. After that, it started to fade off. I started because obviously I got busy again after COVID mm-hmm. kind of started, started to die down. Still not there yet. Mm-hmm. But um, so I do it more just for fun now. But there was one point it was it was a pretty good business. So huh. I like it a lot. So if you if you want to get a painting done, head to Austin's Vibe and Paint on Instagram. Uh, it's in my it's in my bio, uh, Brody on Instagram as well. So we'll have it in the description of all the videos. And yeah, stuff like for that, sure. Where, for where sure. they can find you, your business profile, stuff like That's that. Love. That's love. Yeah, for sure, bro. It's crazy. I see. <clears throat> obviously, being able to go out now more and more. I mm-hmm. see you. I see other friends out. What, how should I put this? What pickup advice or like advice with girls would you say works the best for, for the people that are looking in the audience? Because more and more people have said, you know, if you just talk about girls and stuff like that, I feel like it'd be more relatable to me because we have mostly a male audience. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Honest to God, it might be corny, whatever. Just be yourself when it comes to girls. Like, because at the end of the day, who's going to rock with you is who's going to rock with you. Because if you you can pretend to be the smoothest dude on planet Earth, but like if that's not truly who you are, if you're a quirky dude or whatever it may be, like she's gonna figure out eventually. So just be authentic, be yourself. That's that's really all you can do. Shout out Lauren. (laughs) (laughs) My lips are sealed there. I already name dropped her once in a, in a yes in an episode. So. You gotta do everything in twos. I got you. no odd numbers. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Double another double entendre. Uh huh. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You're like king of the double entendre. Yeah. Today. They, I actually uh hit the SoundCloud. No, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> you actually have one. <laughs> no, I don't. That'd be kind of. I might make though. one though. Really? Why not? I've been I've been asked if I was a rapper a few times, honestly. Really? It's the tattoos. Well, the show, show, the, show the audience a tattoo on their arm. That, listen, some of the coolest tattoos you've ever seen on this dude. Do another shout out. Artistic Dermographics. Head to my girl, Debbie. Best in the game, at least in this area. Huh. All right. But yeah. Cool. Once, once or twice. I've been thinking about getting a tattoo, but it hasn't. the whole situation hasn't happened yet. It's kind of dark, but it's not dark. What is it? So basically, like, close family members, when they pass, I don't believe, like, in, like, the whole thing, like, people are completely gone, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, you still, in my opinion, <clears throat> you still carry them, like, around your heart, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the idea would be, like, to have, like, their signature, one that they wrote or something like that um, from, like, a letter or whatever. That's cool. And have it, like, tattooed somewhere, like, underneath here, just, like... I don't have any on my ribs. I heard they hurt there. I heard. But the pain of losing somebody would also hurt. Yeah. That kind of be like the thing. No, so I agree. I, like everybody, it'd be like, I hate to say like like a list, but it would be like a list 
uh, in the order of like how it happens or whoever That'd be cool. passed on first. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. I I like that idea. I really do. Yeah. I I want to get one uh, in my grandma's handwriting. Mm. She has a saying. It's like whenever someone sneezes, mm. she'll say, God bless you. May mm. the devil never get you. Huh. So I want to get May the Devil Never Get You, like in her handwriting. She's still alive and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. My thing with it is like they don't got to be dead just to give them their flowers. No, I know? agree. I so, agree. Yeah. I like that though. It's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. That's one of the only ideas I have. That's your first one? I don't, I mean, I don't have any tattoos currently, but I always wanted to get like the OVO on the wrist or the that, wrist hurts or the owl. That'd be cool. For the praying hands, you know. Like I want to get six. a. I want to get a Nipsey Hustle tattoo. Really? I do. What kind? I don't know yet. But I, I don't know where. I don't know what. But Ooh. something. Because Nipsey, I don't know what it is. He's like, whenever I'm like feeling down or something, mm -hmm. he's who I like. I, I like listen to him. Like, mm -hmm. like not even his music. Like, like he has a lot of like wisdom and stuff. Like, definitely, yeah. You can go through videos and stuff. Like, just listening to him talk. I think he gives good insight, so I kind of want to get some hmm. just to show that off. I got you. Going going on to music. Hold on one second here. Going on to music, because I feel like this is like, it's different for everybody. And I always want to know like what everybody's music taste is. Yeah. I don't want to say top five artists, but like, what are you like five go-to artists to listen to? Okay. So first I'll give two shout outs. They're my... They're my favorite artists. Like they're number one and two. They're both dead though, which is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Pop Smoke and Nipsey Hussle. Um, other than that, Tory Lanes, love the dude. You can say what you want about him. I know there's a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. Love him. Love his music. I like the way he acts. He's just a funny dude. So mm -hmm. I got a lot of love for Tory. Other than that, I don't really got like a four and five, but like. I'm really into like the R&B music I got more you. so than like like the rap and stuff. Okay. I listened to a lot of 50 Cent recently, which really? is weird. I love 50 Cent. Huh. I don't know what it is. I like that like aggressive style. Mm -hmm. It's just something about it. I like it a lot. What about you? Well, first of all, 50 Cent. Yeah, as soon as the Super Bowl halftime show premiered. He popped off. It was crazy because it was a off. surprise thing. It's like he's like new again. Almost. Yeah, but people were making fun of him for – they were like fat shaming him. He's not fat at all. That man – Call him fat to his face. Exactly. He'll kick your ass. Exactly. That man. He's a real gangster. Built. And he's also a, a business mogul now, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. I read that he had like a net worth of $100 million, $150 million. And then with lawsuits and he made like a bad investment, he lost almost all of it. Yeah. But now his net worth is like $40, 50000000 million. So he's getting it back up. That's the thing. But top five. uh Top five as my my mother walks into the room. <laughs> top five uh, artists for me, uh, mainstream Drake is Man, the number you one. You like what you like. You like yeah, what you like. I like Drake. I started listening to him in like sixth grade. Yeah, I really haven't stopped. Evidently, number two right now. It's the weekend. He's good. I like. I, I love. I, 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 I debated him. Weekend. He's he's probably around my top five. I love me some weekend, He's especially nice. in times like this where like you know, winter's you know kind of fading away. We have spring coming on. I'll tell you what, he hits in the fall time for oh, me. He hits in the fall King of the fall, you know, yeah. like it speaks for itself. Definitely. And then Kanye is the third, another mainstream, three mainstream artists. I know, um, just like everything when it comes to his production from his songs, all these crazy beats to what he sang. Did you start that uh, documentary? I finished it. How would you feel about it? I only watched the first episode so far, but I'll tell you what, that man. Tell this for anybody listening. If I'm ever like feeling unmotivated or something, tell me to go watch that documentary because that put that put juice in my veins. Mm -hmm. That made my soul like mm -hmm. they made me feel something. Like I was like I was ready to roll after that. Two and three are better. Well, I think number one is better than two. But in my opinion, I like three the best. Okay. Because one and two were all about um, <clears throat> college dropout. And after that, uh, and like the accident and stuff like that. And then three was about everything else. Yeah. It was it was crazy. I definitely, I, I need to finish it. I really I do. loved it. Anyway, Kanye number three. Number four is Logic. And I really? Feel like, yes. I feel like, I don't think he's really, is he mainstream? He's kind of mainstream. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say mainstream. I don't know. 
He don't do it for me. I'm not gonna lie. I understand. I understand. It's more so his some of his old stuff, but his uh, latest two albums for me, I feel like it was like a return to form type of thing. It's just like the way he's so talented, and I feel like he's underrated. He I'll give him that. There's like the the rate that words can come out of his mouth. He's lyrically be, gifted. Oh my gosh, no doubt, no question about it. Hands down, one of the most underappreciated artists. If you don't want to just limit it to rappers yeah. of our generation, mm-hmm. and I feel like I don't know the fact that like nowadays like mumble rap and like trap is like popularized i feel like that kind of puts him at a disadvantage i agree but that's fair to say i don't know it it is what it is in that respect i i I can only listen to so much trap and mumble rap before it's like ah. it don't really do it for me neither i more i like the trap more than the mumble rap but Mm -hmm. like for me like i don't know what it is i'm either listening to r&b like Mm -hmm. like the brent fight like you know that toxic shit Mm -hmm. or just like aggressive as hell like i won't even lie like shame me if you want i like six nine. Oh, i'm gonna say it I'm, I'm not ashamed of it six nine gets it done for me i like him a lot i see now <laughs> no no I, I i a couple songs do hit for him or for me rather when listening to him but like is it like the beats i'm just curious because for me i love some of the beats the, the beats are beats. hard the beats are hard but i don't know it's just like he, he don't have a great voice or nothing. His no, lyrics not aren't all. great. It's just like... He just screams. The way he addresses it, like... It's just like... It's like, get out of my face or like... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, kind of like a rock star in that regard, too. When you think about saying. it. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no such thing as bad publicity. And no. The, he's not what he once was. But, like, at the same time, like, at one time, he was popping, like, with senior, the biggest names out year. there. Yeah. yeah. He was popping. So, like, say what you want, like... He's doing something right. He had Nicki Minaj, he had Kanye, oh Bobby Schmurda on his album. Lil Baby. Yeah, that's right. He had a Boogie, Tory Lane. Like, he had, yeah. he had everybody. Yeah, like, bro. He was popping off. Yeah. So but, everything happened. Like, in spite of, like, that, I feel like he's in, like, a category of his own. But, like, for me, like, that trap stuff, going back, it, it doesn't really do it for me, which is why number five, Kendrick Lamar, Respect. for me, if you want to, like – Listen to a rap that I like tell you a story or like act like a dude that actually says something. Mm-hmm. It's him. That's fair. And I, th- the a large reason for that for me why I put him at five and he's even in the conversation of top five artists for me is because I think To Pimp a Butterfly is probably the best album of all time. It's a damn good album. It's a damn good album. I personally. I love them both. Yeah, I put Cole over Kendrick. Really, I do. I understand. It, it's a it's a toss. They're, up. they're both very good though. Like you won't get any hate out of me from either of them. I just feel like Kendrick's voice is like just a little bit more. It's more unique, impactful, and unique. Yeah, yeah that's fair to say. Yeah, definitely. But they both have like that same energy, like in terms of um, telling a story or like really rapping to mean something. Yeah. Rather yeah. than, you know, oh, I got a lot of hoes. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, like in high school, like, I listened to, like, like Travis and, Uzi, mm-hmm. you know, like, every every white boy rapper you can think of. Oh, everybody did. Like, as I grew up, and I guess if you want to call it matured, I wouldn't. I'm still a kid at heart. Oh, like, I'm not mature. Yeah. It just was, like, tacky at some point. Mm-hmm. I, I can't do it no more. Yeah. Did you listen to the new Lil Durk album, speaking of which? Though? I did not, no. I haven't I started gone to it. it really? I started it. It's nice. It's nice. I'll have, to, I'll have to check it out. But yeah, I always thought of it like, okay, you're a kid. You eat junk food. I equated, you know, mumble rap and trap music especially to like junk food. But mm-hmm. you really grow an appreciation for like healthier foods, vegetables as you get older. That yeah. Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole type of thing. You definitely. know what I mean? Definitely. So definitely that. I'll listen to honest to God anything but country music. I do not mess with the country it music is. at all. See, when the summer, like, everyone's like, I don't like it until the summer. Not even then. Like, I don't like it, period. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. You know what I listen to in the summer? Reggae music. Really? Reggae music, man. That's different. It's good. Really? I don't know if you go on family vacations or you got a trip with your friends planned out or what, but in the summer, you're sitting at the beach. Huh. Drinking a Corona or whatever may have you. 
Some Crown, Crown Apple. Apple. Royale. Sponsored by Crown Apple, by the way. Thank you, Crown, for not giving us a sponsorship yet, but we will get it. We love you. Even if we have to take it. We love you even though it ain't happened yet. But I'm telling you, who I listen to mostly, uh, so Bob Marley, his son, also makes music. Mm -hmm. They call him Junior Gong, Mm -hmm. Damian Marley. Shout out Damian Marley. Mm -hmm. Dude makes anthems. Really? Anthems. There's a song called uh, Medication. It has um, Ty Dolla Sign and Wiz Khalifa in it. Mm -hmm. Damn good song. Really? Uh, Man, that thing will make you tap your feet. I swear to God. Wow. Huh. I'll have to check it out. Need to, man. Need to. Wow. I've been getting into lately 90s rap. I swear to God, same. Because here's the th- once again, I'm craving stuff that's actually gonna tell me yes. something, like tell me a story. Hey, man, we're on the same page there. Uh <clears throat> not really Tupac is my I have a couple songs. I have a playlist. I just but like the ghetto boys, Biggie Smalls, Jay-Z, Eminem, the first album. Um Whichever one that was, I, the Marshall Mathers LP. I, I don't think it is. Anyway, the one from 1999. <clears throat> um, who else? Snoop Dogg, especially like people like that. Mm-hmm. Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, yeah, Easy E. Like towards the end, like all of that stuff. It's good, man. Real, it's really good. good. And it's like a couple of those songs will have you ready to like run through a wall. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god, bro. Am I uh? I do Apple Music. I think Spotify is better, but I do Apple Music. In my top five last year, actually, Tupac was number four in it. Really? I I love him. But, like, even deeper than that, like, Ice Cube's nice. Mm-hmm. Biggie's nice. I put I put Tupac over Biggie. But, like, I, I like Snoop Dogg a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I started doing that a couple months ago, actually. Like, it's funny you say that. Yeah. I love it. Like it's so much. It's better than what's today. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie. Like it's crazy. Old heads, like they say all these things. It's like okay, whatever, man. They got us beat in music. Yeah, for sure. At least right now, maybe like mm, ten years ago, maybe even less. I don't know. I feel like around 2016 was like the last good year in terms of a lot of things. Yeah, like we had views. Then we had Chance the Rapper's album, who he ended up winning Album of the Year. We had The Life of Pablo. We had 21 Savage's album. What else did we have? Um, I feel like there was a Post Malone album there, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was his first. It was his debut album. Man, that thing was nice. Uh-huh. I won't lie. Some people hated on it. I don't understand he why. He hasn't dropped anything remotely close to that. He since. had that, that country album. Post Malone had a country album? I'm pretty sure, but you didn't hear about it because I don't think it did well. What's I rem- it called? I don't know. I, I, I remember, though. Look it up. I, I, I'm pretty sure. What I, I don't know, but I, yeah, bro. Bud Light was, like, sponsoring it. Oh, I Matthew can't. McConaughey did, like, a little promo with him for it. I'll tell you who can make country music that's a rapper. Huh. Young Thug. Mm-hmm. Bro, it'd be like, Country Billy made a couple million. That guy, it's like, okay. That guy transcends everything. Bro. He wore a dress and like because he had the stick. Yeah, he had the stick. <laughs> he wore a dress and like it worked. Man, I don't, I'm not gonna lie. I've been saying this for like a year now. I swear to God, like you can ask like my friend's page or whatever. But okay. um, it's like half joke, half serious. I want to get a dress, <laughs> but no, for real. Go I want to. I want to get ahead. a dress. Go ahead. Take a like, do like a photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a picture on Instagram, like post it. Just because I know, like, like, like I said earlier, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah, that'll get people chirping like no other. Yeah, I, I I love like stirring the pot, creating controversy. So like, I mean, I have this podcast just for exactly. I mean, to have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand it. There's like obviously there's the two is like you know two yin and yang in your head. It's like oh, this is a good idea. It's a bad idea. Me personally, I wouldn't do it. I was actually talking to on the last podcast, um, my two friends about how, like, in society, like, it's weird, like, who even gave words like their name, you know what I mean? Yeah, and we were talking about that, and then I said, Who even like made like these gender roles, gender roles, you know what I mean? and obviously, and I wasn't like trying to like push any like narrative or whatever, but yeah. I know. My one friend kind of pushed back on us. So I was like, I was like, eh. Devil's Next advocate. Yeah, yeah, fun. exactly. Yeah. yeah. But like even just, I naturally played the devil's advocate all the time for like everything. Mm-hmm. But like who even said, you know what I mean? Like 
that it's like I don't know. I'm I wouldn't do it. First time I saw a dude wear a dress, I was 14 and in shock. Um, I'll tell that story real quick. Um, Go ahead. It was high school freshman year, and there was a guy who wanted to be a girl. Basically, a uh, very nice person. I always avoided saying, "Hey, man," or because I, I didn't, you know, you're, just, you're uncomfortable. You're, you're younger, whatever. Um, and so we had a dodgeball tournament for the whole freshman class after school one day for chan- cancer charity, something like that, yeah. some foundation. And, you know, I got myself into the situation where he, we'll say he, because he was he That's at fine. the time, yeah. he was chasing me with the dodgeball. <laughs> and it came to a point where I had to make a cut in tennis shoes on the gym floor to, you know, avoid getting tagged. And, you know, he's running around, whatever. <laughs> and I'm and I'm just trying to, you know, look masculine. Uh, but he tagged me. And I will forever that remember that moment as the moment that the trans kid uh, got me out in dodgeball. Man. Hey, it is what it is. But you know what? Let me, let me just say one of the nicest people ever – 100%. I don't know what uh, you're doing now, but if you're watching, I uh, just want to say I hope you're doing all right. So that's uh, really it. That's <clears throat> but, like, yeah, at the time I was, like, shocked because I had never, like I said, he at the time wore a dress to a football game. And I was in shock. I didn't know, like, what to uh, – I, I never encountered that before. Yeah. Right? But I'm almost, like, thankful that it happened because it exposed you to, like, a whole different group of people and a – you know, different way of thinking. And despite, you know, who I may make fun of sometimes, um, it's really all love. Like, I don't have any hate for anybody. So, Thanks. yeah. Thanks. So, pushing that boundary, like. See, that's all, that's all it is for me. Like, I've, like, in my friend groups, like, I've always been, like, the ones, like, like, they got, like, some, some feminine side to them. Like, I uh, I'll own it, like you know what I mean. Everybody does. I, I I embrace it, like I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared mm-hmm. to admit it, like mm-hmm. you know I like what I like. If that I, I am straight, let me say that. <laughs> but like I like what I like, and if that means it makes me a little more feminine, then I can't so cut be it. it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like, like the idea with that dress, it's almost like a I don't care what you think, mm-hmm. like like fuck you, like you know what I mean. Yeah, like, that's I think what Kid Cudi did on Saturday Night Live. Exactly. It's a, it's like mm-hmm. a. It's not like a, this isn't necessarily who I am, but like, I'm not scared to be there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Kind of like Harry Styles, too. He got a lot exactly. of flack. Exactly. I have a friend, a couple of friends who or two friends that are like really big Harry Styles fans. And like, he was getting a lot of flack and it's like, but you're just giving him more publicity. No such thing as he, he, He's Yeah, he's doing that because he knows you're going to say... To your friends, oh, look at this, a bunch of moms, whatever. Yeah. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Eventually, you're going to press play. Yeah. You want to yes. see what's going on. Eventually, it's going to lead to you pressing play and listening to his music. So why not? Mm-hmm. You know what and I mean? And we live in a world where, like, the big, like, the bigger your name is, regardless of what it's for, the more success you're going to get. That's the, yeah. with, with social media and whatever may have you, like. Like, that's what it's about anymore. Yeah. It's, it's and, creating a brand, a name for yourself. Exactly. And you know what? Is it a little weird? Yeah, sure. It is. But, like, yeah. we, we can admit that. But who am I? You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. To judge somebody like that. Exactly. And it's like, and yeah. if you do want to judge me, go ahead and tell all your friends about me. Like, yeah, it is what it is. Mind you, this does not abstain anybody from, like, getting made fun of for the sake of, like, making people laugh. I, I try to toe that line pretty good (laughs) um but yeah like it's all about intent really and if the goal is to make people feel uncomfortable and like to hurt people's feelings then that's not yeah no everything is done with pure intent Mm -hmm. whether it be good or bad like yeah like i'm talking about the world in general yeah yeah yeah. like everyone like they have a reason behind everything they do yeah definitely definitely i hope so at least exactly other than like the nameless gray faces on twitter hey shout out juju go browns yeah, we got, we got no love for you. Shout out, nameless gray. Shout out, Juju, um, that guy. Yeah, hey Juju, if you're if you somehow stumble upon this, I don't like you. No, all love though. <laughs> all love though. If you're if you're trying to post like repost the pod, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna say no. 
Anyway, yeah, yeah. Good shout out, shout out the Browns. Shout out the Browns, man. Full disclosure, he's not watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, the one person that I want to get hit the most in the NFL is Juju. <clears throat> Juju or Claypool for me. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, I think it's Claypool. You think it's Claypool? I think I. Man, ever since he, huge Browns fan here, by the way. Yeah. Um, ever since he said what he said about after we beat them in the playoffs, he's like, "Oh, they're gonna get clapped next week." Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, you're such a sore loser. For real. Like, come on. Hey, that's what I'm saying. So, I wouldn't. I I don't wish injury upon anyone, mm-hmm. but a good knock on him, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> he, he could get up. I want him. Did. I want him to get up and be healthy. But just that, just that clobber. So like, maybe he go, makes the social media. Maybe a little dizzy. He has to go into the locker room, but he comes back out at halftime. I, I don't. I don't wish anything negative upon him. But to, <clears throat> yeah, see, to see him get smacked one time, yeah, it'd be all right. Yeah, I wouldn't hate it. Neither would I. We'll be. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Mm-hmm. Fully uh, functional. Right. I'm not gonna lie. I don't even know mm-hmm. where we left it off. We were talking about how we don't like Chase Claypool. Mm. Yeah, that guy's a dick. I'm not a fan. Man. Here's my thing with him. <clears throat> As a football player, I feel like he could be so much better. Like we're talking. I, did he even get to a thousand yards this season? I think he did. He might have just barely got there. I truthfully don't know off the top of my head. I feel like he could be 1,500 a season. I'm not going to lie. He's good. He's so he's very talented. Good. And I don't want him to be good, but, like, because, you know, like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, it's it's nothing personal. It's just mm-hmm. as a Browns fan, I don't want to see the Steelers succeed. They, they robbed me of, what, 20 years of joy? Yeah. So, but at the same time, he's a very talented player. Yeah. Juju's probably gone. I hope so. I, mean, I don't know where he's going, but he's just so obnoxious. It feels like oh every catch he makes. I pray to God he don't come to the Browns. Mm. I pray to God. That'll be probably the one move that Cleveland fans like. When we say like, "Oh, I would, I would hate if he came." Like, they we actually hate like if he came. I would be upset. I would be thoroughly upset. I I can't stand it, dude. I would imagine we have a lot of Steelers fans watching because, you know, this area, man, it's pretty half and half, I think. Yeah, I'd say there's a little bit more brown than yeah, Steelers. Yeah, yeah, just because we're in Ohio. Yeah. But it is what it is. My one friend, won't, won't, won't name drop, but my one friend used to talk, well, no, my one friend's friend used to talk to Chase Claypool. Are you serious? Yeah, so I don't think they're talking anymore. I don't know the extent of it, but they were like a thing for a little bit, and that's really all I got. I huh. I've heard he's a nice guy outside of football. He seems like a nice guy. Yeah, because my my friend like obviously like she met him and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He was actually almost he almost came to that Halloween party that um that night. It didn't end up happening obviously, but there were talks about it. I didn't I didn't know how serious it was or whatever, but um. She said he's a nice guy. So like it's no it's no hate off like outside mm-hmm. of like the NFL, but like inside of it, I'm not a fan. I don't I don't like the guy on the football field at least. I got you. Like the 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 shit he did uh what was it, the Chargers game? Mm-hmm. They're they're out of timeouts and he's he's celebrating. Yeah, he's like, celebrating. He I lost like, the game for them. I agree. Yeah. I agree. They had no business winning that game. They make a huge comeback. They had one more play. Exactly. Exactly. Crazy, man. I was at the game. I was at Ben's last home game. Man, I almost went. No, I, I'm happy I didn't. Yeah, I'm mm, – it was something else. Because you see what happened was, as a Browns fan, right, the season after they go to the playoffs, you think, okay, this is about to be the year. Oh, my God. I'm not going to lie. I, I felt like an idiot. I, w- I was calling Super Bowl. Everybody was. I was like, we're going to Super Bowl. I didn't think Super Bowl. I thought AFC Championship at least. at least. But we went, and season before – not the season before. Before the season started, me and a couple other people that went to Ursuline, we all got together, like six of us, and we wanted to go to at least one game. Mm-hmm. We decided it will be awesome to see Ben's last home game if he 
did retire, but we weren't even thinking about that. We were thinking it's going to be for the division, a game, Browns versus Steelers, for the division. Mm. And it's going to be a great – both teams are going to be in the playoffs already. So you it's going to be great. early. Yes. Yeah. In June. Okay. Wow. Or we eliminate them from the playoffs right then and there. Boom. Oh, ah, and, uh, you know, we still win it. Okay. And then we found out, boom. Oh, holy shit. It's going to be Ben's last home game. Every, everyone and their mothers that I know was at that game. Me too. Yeah. 50 people for no reason. Swear to God. And then, like, uh, they just shat the bed Man. continuously. See, because, so, like, my best friend, <clears throat> he's a big Steelers fan. So, uh-huh. like, me and him, we clash heads all the time. Shout, yeah. out, shout out Hayden. Much love, brother. Um, So, we clash heads, like, constantly. Like, especially Brown Steelers League. Like, we almost tell each other, like, like let's not talk to each other because we'll we'll get in like fights about it like really? some, some childish ass shit like like not get along. Wow. But so he was trying to like go to the game. He went to the game. So he he was like, bro, like I got these tickets we can get, mm-hmm. not too expensive around the two hundreds, but they're they're good seats. But I'm like, I had just bought a car at the time. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I knew we weren't going to win the game. Like, it's mm-hmm. Ben's last home game against yeah. the Browns. Like, he's going to get his last hurrah. So, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make it work. And I'm I'm very happy I didn't because, obviously, we, we we shit the bed. Yeah. Got, got our asses kicked. There. I remember watching that game. I was watching it by myself, actually, because I always watch games with my dad, but he went to bed because mm-hmm. it was a night game. Mm-hmm. And I just remember hearing Cleveland sucks. Like, I like almost like take pride. I'm not even from Cleveland, but like yeah. I take pride in like Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Like that like upset me. Yeah. Like I was like, I was upset. So like me being at that game, I can't even imagine like what I would have done, what I would have said. Cause you know, obviously I'm gonna have a few drinks with me if I go to the game. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just happy I wasn't there because like I might have if someone said something negative to me, it might have been ugly. Like I'm not even gonna lie. Well, I'll tell you what happened uh, from somebody that was there. We were surrounded by Pittsburgh fans. Of course. And the Cleveland Sucks chants were pretty loud. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you heard them on TV. Yeah. And as soon as they played Renegade, Man. all the towels started going. And it was just an endless cycle of complaining on the way home because, like, the Browns have no tradition. Like, fans, there's no tradition. When you go there. There is a tradition, but it's it's bad. You have to understand, we walked in, right? And the pillars holding up the ceiling are in the shape of Super Bowl trophies. And there are six of them. And, dude, it's so nice in there. You could tell the people that work for there care about the organization. Everybody in that organization yeah, cares I've, about the Steelers and winning. I've been there before. I've... Oh, when they wave the towels at the same time, it's like, oh, they're so passionate. I hate them, bro. Uh, it's I hate terrible. Them so bad, bro. And every time something went wrong, they're on your ass. Every time, and they're all drunk, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah, no, they're they're on your ass. I there's a see my thing with it is though. Yes, Steelers fans like they're crazy about this. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah, for sure. Browns fans are at the same time too, though. Yeah, like it might be different ways. So, in my opinion, and maybe I'm biased because I'm a Browns fan. There's two just like insanely hostile environments in the NFL. The Philadelphia Eagles, mm-hmm. everyone knows about that, and the Cleveland Browns. So I remember my first ever Brown Steelers game. Because you know, if you're a Browns fan, like Brown Steelers fan like games, that's what like that's that's like it. You like, did that's everything. That. It's everything. So my first game, I went with my dad, probably like eight years old. I'm mm-hmm. a youngin. Mm-hmm. I remember I went to the bathroom because I had to go pee, whatever. There's a Steelers fan that got knocked unconscious, like like someone punched him in the face, knocked him out cold. No shit. Browns fans were taking turns pissing on him, like he's laying on the bathroom floor and everyone's pissing on what? him. Why? Like, I I won't I won't say I take pride in it, cause mm-hmm. like like at the end of the day it's human decency. Mm-hmm. Like I don't condone it, but at the same time, like at that age, like that gave me insight to like. We hate them. Yeah, like it's 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 like a war almost. Like Browns and Steelers fans do not get along. They never will. Like it's just a thing. It, it like that like as an eight year old seeing that that was crazy. You hear that, Lauren? Hey, Lauren, she's a Steelers fan. I know. We don't. Lauren, I love you, but 
you gotta be a Browns fan, or I, I just can't. But she's blonde. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, and, <laughs> no, going back to what you said real quick. Yeah, I have somebody I used to be really good friends with. We just kind of fell off, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. People grow apart. Things happen. Yeah, nothing against him. Like we're cool, whatever. Um, his parents said they went. Back in 2000, when his mom was pregnant to the Browns for Steelers game in yeah. Cleveland, and something like one of them got beer dumped on them, mm-hmm. like it was like some serious shit, and they haven't went back since. Are they Browns or Steelers fans? Steelers fans. Yep, that's nuts. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like it's gotten better though since like the early to mid 2000s or late 2000s, I should say. I feel like as the team's gotten better, mm-hmm. like so have the fans. But just like the NFL in general, there's not – well, you can't even say that. You still see some fights sometimes. Oh, yeah, I mean yeah. – You can't really say they've cleaned up their stuff. I mean, to a certain degree, maybe. It's a violent sport, man. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, like, it's never going to be perfect. Yeah. It never will be. Yeah. But – I don't have as big of a problem with some of the rule changes as a lot of people. Like, they're just trying to protect players and stuff like that. Like, they don't want players to die at, like, 50, 40, 30. No, yeah, I agree with that. Like, I think there is some stuff that's a little soft. But, Mm -hmm. like, you don't want to see helmet to helmet. You don't want to see head injuries. So, like, to that extent, I get it. I think the quarterback's a little bit overprotected. Mm -hmm. But it's – I think it is necessary to a degree. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like you said, there is some stuff. You know, you 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 kind of you kind of touch him. You kind of touch the That's quarterback, and like, like a little shove after and the it's, throw, and like, it's roughing the passer, or even like um, the taunting penalties now. Yeah, like like With the Chicago Bears. The yes, <laughs> Pittsburgh got bailed out of that game, yeah. man. That was he he. I forget exactly how it went, but like he did nothing wrong. No. And that, that flag, that cost the Bears a game. He just looked intimidating. That was it. Exactly. Like, and l- Let's be real. Physically. If Pittsburgh loses that game. They don't make the playoffs. They don't make the playoffs. No, the Colts do. Yeah. Crazy. It is crazy. Ugh, I've never been to Indianapolis, but apparently it's like a decent place. I heard the field's really nice. There. Really? Yeah. One day I want to go to California. Specifically, Los Angeles. That's like the goal is to make it out there, of course, and just see what happens. Man, I've never been out to LA, but I feel like it'd be cool as shit. My mom doesn't like it, but I, I pretty much everybody else was a fan. Only place I've been out west was uh, Vegas. Mm. I was probably eight years old. It was for my aunt's wedding. Mm. The vivid memory I have from that, though. So, like, when you're on the strip of Vegas, like, oh. you'll get a lot of like. Dudes, like, like, so there's a lot of prostitutes out there, obviously. Mm-hmm. They'll, like, like, they, they little, it's like a Pokemon card almost. Like, it's like a prostitute's mm-hmm. picture with, like, a name and number and all this shit. So they, like, they'll just flick them at people at night. Like, I swear to God. And so I, the most vivid memory I have from there, this dude's flicking cards. One flicks, hits my dad in the face. My dad, he's a bigger dude, okay? Yeah. So for context, he, he played Division One football. Like, a bigger dude, probably 6'2", a mm-hmm. little less than 300 pounds. Big dude. Mm-hmm. He flicks one, hits my dad in the face. My whole family's there. My, my mom, my dad, my younger sister. And he goes, so it hits him in the face. My dad, he's a confrontational dude, I'd mm-hmm. say. He goes, like, come on, man. Like, like, my whole family's here. Like, don't be doing that shit. The dude has the balls, all right? This is what he says to my dad. He goes, you can bring your daughter, too. What? Swear to God. My dad goes, you got three seconds to start running before I beat the shit out of you. Dude, just dead bolts, gone. Never saw him again. What the fuck? Swear to God. Like, like, it's different out there, man. It's different out there. I'm 10 years old, 12 years old, whatever I am at this age. I don't even know. And I'm like, how old was your sister? She's three years younger than me, so anywhere from seven to ten. Jeez. Like, that ain't right, man. But I just remember, like, I was like, wow. Ugh. Fights out there at home, like, crazy. Like, homeless people. Oh, I believe it. All they do is <clears throat> fight. Because, like, what's crazy is, like, they almost, like, want to get arrested because it's, like, a place for them to stay. Mm-hmm. So, like, I remember one time we were walking. My mom, like, she's, like, oblivious to that shit. My dad's from, like. He's, like, from, like, 
the ghetto side of DC. Mm-hmm. So like he's like more aware, observant to that mm-hmm. shit. My mom, she's walking through like the middle of a crowd. Like these two dudes are just full on fist fighting. She like she's completely oblivious. She's just taking it all in. You know, really? being a tourist. Yeah, yeah. My dad full on like grabs her like like get the get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Like you get you yeah. get punched in the face. Yeah. It was Vegas. I was there for like three or four days. Uh, I have like so many memories from it though. None of them that great, but like I do get a lot of memories Damn. from it. That's cool though that at least you got to go out there, man. It was cool. We went to her her uh, wedding was like like in the desert. Huh. It was really pretty. It was like a bunch of yeah. like big rocks. Mm-hmm. There's like all red and stuff. It was really cool. That's cool. I'm trying to remember that movie that was set in like Nevada, specifically like the suburbs of Vegas. It was like it might have been called like Echo or something like that. I don't know. It, I think it it might be on Netflix. Anyway, I I every time I hear Las Vegas, I think of that movie. We were in Vegas on that trip because we drove to California. <clears throat> That's a hike. We did. No, but it was cool, though. I'm not going to lie. Okay. It was fun. We went to, I'm trying to think. It was Ohio to somewhere, Ohio to somewhere to New Orleans, to New Mexico, to California, to Vegas, to somewhere to home. Mm-hmm. It was cool. But we were only in Vegas for a couple hours. I remember it was like 110. Oh, what's crazy is, though, like you don't sweat. Yeah, it was weird. You don't sweat. It was weird. <clears throat> uh, I guess it's like um, there's like no humidity out there. Mm-hmm. And like the humidity is what makes you sweat. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like you have like a – my dad said it. He said – um, what he say? It's like a blow dryer. Mm-hmm. It's like it just feels like you have like a blow dryer yeah. being pressed on you. But like – like so like you get really hot, but you don't sweat. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. And sweat is like the natural like coolant to – Obviously, I'll be cool down. Yeah. So, like, yeah, we were. <clears throat> Jeez. Um, <laughs> we were. Uh, we were so excited to get back to, into the van that we had at the time for the air conditioning. We were all for it. We were ready. Yeah. I think we. Uh, where we go? Like at In and Out or something like that. Wherever you know, one of those uh, West Coast fast food yeah. and stuff like that. But it was cool though. Like I said, we were there in the daytime, so we didn't really get to see all of, you know, yeah, the stuff. Mm-hmm. But I would do, I do want to go back to Vegas. So I won't lie, like as a 10 year old, I didn't enjoy it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. We well, don't like, know how to appreciate it. You know exactly. I mean? But like being 21, like I'm not even a gambler. Mm-hmm. But like I do kind of want to like want to go there just to see what it's like. The experience. Exactly. I want to have like a hangover, um, not a hangover, but like a hangover experience. The, like yeah, the movie. The movie. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. when you, when you brought up a movie, that's what I thought you were going to get at was, uh, Hangover. I don't know why I bring up the hangover. <laughs> I don't know. It's what well, we just did, so it's all. Yeah, it's all. It's good. brought up now. People on strips are crazy. Like on the strips of like um, big cities like that, like Vegas, New York, California. I remember when we went to LA, we were on Hollywood Boulevard, and this is one of the reasons my mom hated it because like she thought it was so trashy, which it kind of was trashy in a way, and like that kind of cheapened the whole experience for her, whatever. <clears throat> But there are a lot of, like, homeless people, yeah. and then there are a lot of, like, underground rappers trying to, like, mm-hmm. sell us their CDs. But they didn't sell us their CDs. They gave it to us, and then they were like, okay, now, you know, pay me for the CD. And it's like, no, that we don't want your shitty CD. I don't even know who you are. Yeah, that ain't how this he, works. He's like, oh, my, my name, blah, 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 whatever. Looked him up. He had, like, 900 followers on Instagram. He's like, man, I don't know. I'm the biggest out. Oh, okay. Okay. My mom was like, "We don't want your music. Like, what are you doing?" He pulls out. He pulls out a Mercedes, like a key to a Mercedes. He's like, "Look at this logo." logo." He says, "He's like, I'm a." He's like, he goes, he goes, "I'm a, I'm a winner." This, this what winning's like. She's like, she looks him straight in the face. She's like, "Where's the car?" (laughs) She's like, "I don't see the car." (laughs) Got a van. (laughs) Got a van. But I used to have this CD in my car for like a month because I took, I kept it. I listened to, that's back when you could still have the CDs and the thing. Yeah. That ain't even a thing anymore. I, I know, bro. I listened to a couple and it was, it was terrible. I'm not going to lie. He wasn't the best out. No. Basically. I could have told you that. Yeah. I, I didn't believe it. I mean, when you have like 900 followers on and you're a rapper and you follow like 5,000. You're out in LA too, like. Yeah, I'm you, not saying like it's guaranteed you make it when you go out there, but no, like you, but, you meet people, yeah, you, you gain connections quickly mm-hmm. or quicker, I guess, than you would like 
obviously like in Youngstown, Ohio, or whatever may have you. I know a rapper from Youngstown, Ohio. I actually went to a <clears throat> the high school I graduated at. He's in San Francisco right now. His name is Desmac. Shout out Desmac. He's probably not even watching this, but shout out to you, Desmac. Everybody go. I always like to support him. I listen to his music, yeah. stuff like that. On Spotify, Desmac, you can contribute to his fund. Spotify doesn't make anything, but if you want to contribute to him as an artist, if you like his music, shout out Desmac. I think Desmac on all social media platforms, Apple Music. I think you could get it. I'm not sure, but definitely on Spotify. Yeah, probably you could find you could definitely find his um music videos on YouTube, stuff like that. But yeah, he graduated probably. I'd like to say five years ahead of me. But I just remember him playing basketball and stuff like that. And he's pretty good. Hmm. So we had one kid. He didn't go to my school, but he went to like a rival school. His name was uh, Blaze, but like the E was a three. Mm-hmm. He's been on uh, Adam Twenty Two. You know that is? I've heard of that guy. Yeah, he does like podcasts and stuff too. But um, he he would do like these hour long things where like mm-hmm. you could like he'd like listen to music and stuff. Mm-hmm. And Blaze would like put his music in. So shout out Blaze and like Adam Twenty Two had like some high praise for it. It was pretty good. He went to East Palestine. Okay, he's pretty good. And I got another friend. Um, he went to Liverpool. He does some music too. His name's Gabe. Huh. Shout out Gabe. He does he does some stuff too. He's pretty good as well. East Liverpool is one of those places. It's like I don't mean to shit on people from East Liver- East Liverpool, but like it's kind of like a weird place. Man, it was a drug capital. Of yeah, America for or world Opioid, I don't even know all that heroin. Yeah, yeah I, I remember that thing came out with the the cop who accidentally touched needle or whatever. I don't remember that. So there was this couple like, and they like they like passed out in their car like on a highway or something they were both like drugged out damn and i remember the, like the cops were like clearing the investigation whatever and one of them like touched a needle or something and almost died damn like because like they got a trace of whatever it was i don't i don't want to say something that's not true, yeah, yeah, but yeah i remember like that was that only the like national news all over cnn and all that stuff that's so crazy it's crazy and then obviously it's like right by Steubenville. That's another place. You want to talk about a miserable place? Another big scam. <coughs> I only know one person from Steubenville. I don't know anybody. She's a girl. She goes to YSU. Or I think she died. Anyway, I'll say the name after whatever. But miserable place. Had to stay there. I don't think I've ever been two been nights. To you don't want to go. I'm sure. We played there for football twice. We had to go. And like the way it is, their sidelines, they have all the room in the world. But your sidelines, you literally have this much room between you and the stands. Yeah. Apparently, they flick like hot pennies at you and stuff like that when you like walk out. Yeah, bro. It's not it. Did you play there? Mm-hmm. Did you guys win? No. <laughs> Man, they're a football school. They're a football school. It's stupid. But yeah, bro. It um it's crazy. One of the most depressing towns you'll ever be in. I I, I, I just don't like it at all. It's set up so weird. Because you have it's right by West Virginia, so you're borderline like mountains and stuff like that, hills. And it's like it's kinda like East Liverpool when like everything's on like the in like these hill type of things. Um, then you go up the hill and then when you're on top of the hill, you, there's like these, like all these houses really close together. They're not, I don't remember them being really like, they're not crappy houses. Like people, it seemed like people took care of their houses, Mm -hmm. but they were kind of smaller and boxed together and there wasn't a lot of them. So I think you make a left and a right, then it's literally like their main street. So like a couple restaurants, gas stations. And then you had the football or the school on the left and the football stadium was right there. And they had a horse, dude. The horse was right by the um the scoreboard. And every time Steubenville scored, the horse would breathe fire. That's kind of cool though. It, it is cool. Because that's literally all they have. Over I was gonna there. say I feel like they put a lot of money like yeah. into their football hood and oh. stuff. Once again, not to shit on anybody from Steubenville. I just don't like where you live. <laughs> That's, yeah, Steubenville is like my Detroit. I just don't like it at <laughs> all. You want to talk oh, about Poor Detroit, man. Poor you know Detroit. what? I've never been to Detroit, but I want to go. Why? Eminem. Hey, you know what? They put on the buffs. They put on the buffs. 
You, you already know. Shout out Detroit. They put Shout on the bus. Right Talk about <laughs> talent in terms of like rappers. Eminem, T Grizzly, Big Sean. Those are just the three That's off the right. top of my head. Yeah. They're talented people. Now, the whole situation over there is so screwed up because you had all of these car factories, right, that oh, produced shit hit the fan. everything, and then all of a sudden people just decide, you know what, we're going to make more money. We're going to send all of this stuff overseas to China, mostly China, other foreign countries, and they just lost everything. Yeah. No, I know. Apparently, they used to be like a really rich city, too, like in like the 40s. Oh, they used to be booming. You look at the pictures. Boom, there's there's that there's that picture. It's a classic picture. It's a picture of Detroit in not the forties, maybe like the sixties. Detroit and Hiroshima, right? Yeah. Wait, wherever yeah, Hiroshima, okay. Side by side, and you could see Detroit looks awesome. Rich, everything, bunch of lights. Hiroshima's like nothing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they just dropped the bomb. Yeah. Fast forward to now. And it's in reverse. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. They do got some stuff that comes out of it. Like, yeah. Like you said, them goods. I listened to uh, Saw the Baby a little bit. Okay, I know who you're talking uh, about. Peasy. And then, of course, 42 Doug. Yeah, Everyone 42 knows 42 Doug. Doug. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I feel like what you're saying, like, yeah, like, like they, they were once booming. And I feel like they just, like, haven't been able to recover. You got, it's not in Detroit, but Flint, Michigan, too. Mm-hmm. Like, and you don't even hear about that it been, anymore. How long has it been since they've had water? I don't even know anymore. Like, it's been that long. Did you ever see the video of Obama? No. Nah. Obama went to um, Obama <laughs> went to Flint, and <laughs> he uh, he took a glass of water. He, you know, did did the same. Why? I, why got cold, <laughs> he, got, he got cold water out of the tap, and he kind of drank. He's like, oh. Huh. So it's good. It's good. But like, I don't know if he put his lips on it, like, or if he actually like drank it because it doesn't look like he drank it. Probably didn't. I don't blame him. He shouldn't have drank Man, it. Man, I had to do like a project on them. And like some of the stuff I saw was just terrible. I like, believe it. Like babies are like developing like, like uh, I don't even know, like, like mental disabilities, stuff like that. Like, it's crazy. It's terrible. Yeah, bro. Well, you ready to go eat? I'm ready to go eat, man. All right, bro. I'm ready to go. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I it's been a hell of a podcast. Me, I appreciate you having me. Tell everybody right now where uh, they could find you on social media and stuff like that. Oh, uh, so on Instagram, at Brody slash Austin's Vibe and Pate. Um, you can find me on Twitter also at Brody. Um, that's really it. Um if you go to YSU, make sure you play intramurals. Of course. We got love for that. Intramurals all day. Um, that's about it, man. Okay. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute honor, man. Let's, uh, let's go eat. Let's go eat.